Hello everyone, this is Will. Thank you for joining us here at Apple One to One Training. Uh, we are here to talk about pages once again, but we wanted to discuss a couple of other really awesome uh, topics in pages that will be very helpful, especially when it comes to saving and duplicating and moving the file. Uh, we're gonna do this all within the confines of pages itself. So our goal today really is to go into the file menu and really talk about a couple of items in here that are all about sharing, exporting, publishing to Apple Books, convert to Word, reducing the file size, uh, more advanced features like changing the file type. Uh, so there's a few different things you can do here, even doing it as a password and templates. So that way you can go through this guide over here and really get an idea of how to do things. So the first thing I want to talk about really was right here where it says save and duplicate. So a lot of times when you're in, if you're thinking old school of 1990s, 2000s, a lot of times you would have a save and a save as. Well, Apple changed it up. Apple decided around maybe like 2010, they wanted to kind of change this method up. So obviously, if you're opening up a new document, you're always gonna be doing save. However, a lot of times there would be a save as, that way you're making a different you know, file type basically. But Apple doesn't do that here, so a lot of people are confused on how to do that. Now, the duplicate option is to make a copy of the file. So if I hit duplicate, what it does is it, it's gonna open up a new file, and it copies the exact file, and what it does, it puts the text already highlighted. So if you wanted to put a, almost like a dash, I would use the arrow key dash, and you could put like a date. Like a lot of times people will put like the file name, like as a date. That way they can keep track of the file. Now, we've already discussed this in the top five pages video that you can go back and look at the history of the document and actually grab something from it. But some people are not used to that method yet and I can understand that. So the duplicate feature is a way to create a file separate from your original and then you could add, a lot of people like to do like, like to do dates, for example, especially when they're doing books and stuff like that. So that's how you create that, and then once you do that, you would just go to File Save, and then that would save the file, and then you choose where you're going to put it. And of course, in iCloud, Pages is there as an actual folder. Now, what if you don't like that method and you'd rather just do Save As? So I'm just going to delete the copy that was created here, and I'm going to go to File, and where I go to Duplicate, instead of doing Duplicate, I'm going to hold down a key on the keyboard, which is Option. Option, look what it does. It actually changes a few different things uh, in the screen, but Option will bring down the Save As feature. This is obviously a little different than Duplicate because Save As will directly save the, the file as a file. Now, the reason why so I, can, I still use this method in a lot of ways is because I don't want to edit at the time. That's, what, that's what's really interesting. It's almost like duplicates almost an extra step. And also there's a checkbox here, keep changes in original document if you want to keep the changes, which means that if you've had a history of all the history of your document, you want to keep the changes of it, you can, but you don't have to either. So this is a nice little checkbox that I probably would always keep on. It probably makes the file a little bit bigger, but it's worth it in the end of the day. So again, if you would like to use the old school method of save as, you just got to hold down the option key on your keyboard. There's an option here called rename. So if you go to rename, obviously it highlights up here and you can call it whatever. So I'm just going to undo that command Z. Also, you can just uh, double click up here and do the same thing. Another feature when you double click up here, there's an option here to name it, but you can also move the folder, which is really neat. So if you want to skip a bunch of steps, you can actually double click up here you could rename the file and even move it in the items in your list. They have like your favorites here and your recent places. So it'd be really easy to move the file in the location you want. So that's a great little uh, tidbit as well. Going back over here to file, there's a move to feature. Move to will actually move the file similar to what we just saw to a different folder. So if I go to move to, it'll open up again the same thing I saw before. So there's an advantage from up here where you can do two things at the same time, where if you go over here, rename and move to are two separate items. So if you wanna move it to a different location, you can inside of your 
it's basically like a mini finder. There is an other here, by the way, on the bottom, because as you can tell, you can only see the items that are like either your iCloud library, your favorites, or your recents. And if you go to other, you're gonna open up a full finder window. So that makes it very easy, very old school way of moving things around. So you can actually physically move the file without actually going to finder, which is really great. We talked about Revert2 in our previous uh, top five videos, so please go check out our channel and see our top five. I did go into this. With Share, we also dived into this a little bit, but I'm also running Ventura, so a lot of things have changed as that previous video. They have two options up here, where it says Collaborate and Send a Copy. Collaborate, we talked about this before. There is a Share button right here, at, or it used to be called Collaborate. So they, what they kind of did is they kind of moved them together as one thing. Instead of Collaborate now, it is as what it used to be called it's now just called share and then you have an option to do send as a copy to somebody using via mail messages airdrop or you can collaborate which means that you want other people to edit your video uh, also there's an arrow here which allows you to give certain access so if you're going to collaborate who can access it only invited people or anyone with the link uh, you could do that and then you could go to mail for example and then when i hit mail Mail is going to open up. It has created the document and is now a shared file. Now you can see here, this is not the physical file. It is going to be a shared file as a link when you send it out. Going back to share, you could also message it to people, airdrop. They even have Twitter in here and you can even edit additional extensions. So if there are extensions that you would like to add on, you can. Uh, I pretty much did all of them here, I mean, other than save the books, which you know I don't really do much of that. But you could go to share and you have a bunch of options on how to send the files to certain people. There's another one here called Export 2. We did dive into this in the original video, so please go check out that video if you want to see a little bit more of the options, but always do PDF, that's the bottom line. Publish to Apple Books. So if someone is creating a book, you actually can publish it, your book directly to Apple Books. You sign into your account, and what it does, it allows you to publish your book directly to Apple Books. And you can actually publish it online yourself, which is really a great tool if you want to get your book out there, which I absolutely love. So if you for any reason are making a book and you want to have a digital copy created for Apple Books, you could do that. By the way, if you want to know more about the books and the other uh, e-published format that Apple Books creates here, there is a whole article here within pages of the user guide. Uh, you just got to go to help and then type in convert to and then you'll have a topic uh, which will give you a little more information about the file. So if you're creating a book, which technically is called an ePub file, you can go here and kind of set everything up here for that. So under the publish uh, Apple Books, there is something called Convert to Page Layout or Convert to Word Processing. So this is going back to our, our original video where I talked about in a document area over here, there is something called the document body. So what happens here is a lot of people, if you're creating just a basic word processing file, then you're just typing it like almost like a letter or resume. But like where I'm here in a brochure, where I created text boxes, shapes, and all that, I converted this to a page layout page. So there's two different ones here, and I just wanna show you, like, physically you're not gonna see a difference, but the idea here is that there are two, it's different depending on what you pick. It all comes down to this box right here, document body. If you are creating something like a brochure, a, a certificate, something like that, then you're going to want to use a page layout. However, if you started working on something and you want to convert it into an actual word processing file back to where it was, this is what this button will do, which is also the same as this button. So it, it, honestly, I, I don't know why someone would do that. I guess it's there just so in case someone doesn't understand that, but that's what this file does. Reduce file size. So what that's gonna do is it's going to ask you to scale down some of the items. So they're gonna scale down the large images, remove trim parts, and then if you're doing a movie for some reason, I don't know why you would want to do a movie, but I guess you could do that. Uh, you can uh, change the formatting around uh, to reduce the copy size. So if you want to reduce the file size, you can, especially if your mail provider doesn't support it. But I'll be honest, you should not be sending 15 meg. Everyone knows that there's like a 15 megabyte limit. So you should not be sending files like that anymore. You should be using a Dropbox, an iCloud, something like that. 
uh, set a password. So that way, if you want to protect the file, so that way you can even have a touch ID option here. So if you have like very sensitive subjects and sensitive items in here, you can protect that. Uh, so just to show you an example, I'll set a password for this. I'm just going to do a simple one called Apple. Uh, I'll set the password. And then if I close the file, and then I'll open up and I'll find the file here, open it up. It, it will prompt me for a, a fingerprint. So I'm going to use the Touch ID since I have that. And there's the file. So that way you can set the file. You can also change the password again. You can even remove the password. So you just got to provide it. And then I'll say remove password. And then it's back off. So that's really neat if you want to protect your file. Same as the template is a really good one. So if you would like this to be added to the template chooser. So if you have something you have set up that you're going to be doing all the time, I think like if you're doing something like a mail merge or a something like that, you would absolutely want to use this. So creating a template would be great. So I'm going to say add the template chooser. And then it's going to add it right here as a template. I'll call it my brochure layout. Because if I change this all the time, I'll hit create. Uh, and now it has been created. So now if I go to File New, I should see my templates, and there's a template. And then if I want, I could even right-click or two-finger click and hit Delete. That way I don't have it anymore, and there it goes. So if you don't want to keep the template. But it's always good to have, you'll probably need to have a template for something down the line. Uh, and finally, uh, you know, really we're down to the page setup, uh, really, which we've uh, gone through here where you're formatting it for a printer, the paper size and all that. You can, you can do this all in the document area if you want. Uh, so that's really just going through the file area and deciding, you know, a lot of things are pretty easy, new, open, close. I really didn't have to go through all those items there, but these are just a few ways to share this document out. Uh, that way you can export them out, uh, how to save things. So this was just a really good starting point of going through all the different areas of file and if you needed some instruction on how to use it. May I also suggest that going uh, to Apple's official page, Apple does have a page of support. And if you go all the way down the bottom, they actually have a user guide. So you can actually go to the Mac user guide and they have the full guide right here. They have a table of contents right here so you can go through and really understand how to do things. There's some troubleshooting uh, features built into there, keyboard shortcuts, which I think are really good. So you actually have a full user guide. Also, you can download the guide through Apple Books. So if you hit download the guide, you can actually add this directly to your Apple Books, which is great. So that way I don't use my finger to authenticate. So you always have the pages guide here. Uh, which will be very helpful. So they likely will update this based on that. You can see it updated back in November of 2022. So yeah, so I would actually recommend using the Pages Guide if you've never really used it before. So I hope that's very helpful for everyone here. We want to thank you for joining us for Apple One to One. We really do appreciate it. And I love every single one of you. I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for viewing our content. Don't forget to click the like button and subscribe so you can see all our training videos as well as links to download our podcast.